For a man who's received such adulation, there's still a lot we don't know about Corporal Willy Apiata, VC. And that's just the way he likes it. Last year, when he received the Victoria Cross for Valor, he was a most reluctant hero, forced into the spotlight. In fact, it's only now, 12 months on, that he's really prepared to let us into his life. So, take a good look. It may be the last time you see him for a while. He's going to retreat back into the shadows of the SAS and become the unknown soldier once more. Everything in here eh, is the best place to hit because one, you're taking out his airway. And all that. It's not easy convincing Willy Apiata he should do an interview with me. Put the knife up to the throat. And don't think a knife to his throat could do it. The best way is to cause a distraction. Hey, don't do that, man. Then you reach up with your hand. Eh? Right. And then... But for someone who spent a lot of time in front of the cameras this past year, he's never seemed more relaxed than he is today, showing me some of the tricks of his trade. And the first thing you want to do is get your body offline. You push it out to the side, you grasp it, you pick it up in the air, and when you bring it down, the barrel's pointing at him right. instead of... These skills are second nature to an elite soldier. They need to be for survival. How's your day going, Mike? Push it out, bang, up. And, you know, you You'd feel pretty safe with him around. Guys don't really step out on the battlefield to fight for queen and country and all of that. It's usually for their mates that are standing right next to them. Plenty of juice coming out of it, eh? So you can feel it definitely when it touches your... In amongst the close quarter battle training, we also begin to see another side of Willie's personality. <laughs> He's the joker. We can't let the cameraman miss out, eh? That's the one. See, now we're hanging over the edge. Don't look down, just keep looking straight ahead. Happy? How's it feel now? I don't think happy is a word I'd use, but uh, I'm here. No worries. Now we're just slowly... But he's also an incredibly calming influence. He has that rare quality, a mix of confidence and humility. And then what we'll do from there is slowly walk down. Now start moving the feet slowly down. That's the one. Otherwise, with my fear of heights, it would have been impossible to get me up this tower, let alone down again. Oh, yeah. It's not too bad, eh? Hey, I'm doing it. Yeah. <laughs> the boy who grew up in the tiny east coast town of Tikaha, sole brother to three sisters, lived his life outdoors, hunting, fishing, all the things that come with rural living, quietly amassing the skills that would one day make him an outstanding soldier. I was just loving life on the farm, um, you know, uh, gathering, learning from the old man. And, uh, yeah, uh, I think it just gave you a bit of survival. Eh? The old man always said, you know, appreciate what's in your backyard because when times get hard out there, you always know you've got something. The army seemed a good fit for Willie, and after years with the Territorials and a tour of duty to East Timor, he decided he wanted to be an elite soldier. For the next nine months, you'll conduct yourself around this camp in double-quick time. You will run everywhere. The recent documentary series, First Among Equals, shows graphically just how difficult it is to make New Zealand's SAS. On Willie's first attempt, he didn't make the grade. I was quite burned, eh? You know, no, no person likes to fail. And, um, you know, I wasn't totally prepared, so, you know, I went home quite disheartened, eh? But, uh, but the second time, eh, I was, uh, I was well prepared for that one. And uh, there was no way that I was going to come home. There can be few jobs ever that have such a gruelling um, selection process. The yeah. elation that you must have felt when you have made that. Yeah, you know, um, if it was easy, I suppose everybody would be in the SAS, but, uh, or the SAS, but um, hey, it's, it's, it's like that for a reason. And uh, the guys that made it through really want to be here, that's why they made it. New Zealand Special Air Service bureaus are presented to those personnel... And when they've made it, their arrival into New Zealand's Special Forces Unit is recognised by the presentation of a distinctive beige beret and blue belt. A ceremony known as badging. It was a very proud moment, eh? uh, not just for myself, but for my family too. Eh? I never forget the first day of the, when we were getting the day of the badging. And my mum pulls out a camera and goes, "Stand there, son. I'll just take a picture." And I was like, "No," you know, because uh, that's something we've been uh, 
you know, the photos are, are, are very foreign to us. They have our picture taken. Well, it's not anymore, but <laughs> <laughs> just for me anyway. But, uh, and how was she about that? And she's like, it'll be all right. And I said, no. <laughs> you know, so it was, it was hard for them to get used to a, uh, you know, being up here. But they knew that this was a major thing for you, didn't they? they knew. Oh, yes, yeah, no, they did. They, especially my mum. She's, you know, if there's people who've asked if there was a hero in my life, I, yeah, she's it. But she may not have realised just how soon she'd have to farewell her son. Days later, he was given his first assignment to Afghanistan. It was there that a single act of bravery would become part of New Zealand folklore. An SAS patrol was ambushed by Taliban fighters. Willie's vehicle struck by a rocket, critically injuring the commander. Willie carried him to safety, running 70 metres through enemy fire to get vital medical assistance. He then rearmed and went back to help successfully fend off the Taliban attack. <laughs> 